excited to chat with you. Oh, hello, hello, and welcome to Alta Live, everyone. My name is Beth Spotswood. I'm Alta's digital editor, and I am so excited to welcome you here today with the hosts, the creators of a podcast called Place and Purpose, Chairman Greg Saris and Obi Kaufman. These two master chroniclers of the West have penned some of our favorite texts of and about California. Um, but what we're here to talk to them about today is Place and Purpose, which is a monthly video podcast series that these two pioneering thinkers have launched. It tackles the deepest questions about the lands we inhabit, specifically California and the West, our challenges as a society, and the possibilities of our collective future. Um, so today I get to turn the tables on these two hosts and ask them questions for, for their second season of Place and Purpose. They've, they've had guests themselves, but today they get to be the guests. A bit about our, our guests who are extraordinary, independent of Place and Purpose podcast. Um, Greg Saris is currently serving his 15th term as chairman of the Federated Indians of Great and Rancheria, his tribe, which formerly was known as the Federated Coast Miwok. Greg holds a PhD in modern thought and literature from Stanford and has worked as a full professor of English at UCLA, teaching American and Native American literature and creative writing. The author of many books, including Keeping Slug Woman Alive, A Holistic Approach to American Indian Texts, Grand Avenue, Greg's highly acclaimed and awarded collection of short stories that was adapted for an HBO miniseries, um, and Watermelon Nights. His most recent books include How a Mountain Was Made and Becoming Story, A Journey Among Seasons, Place, Trees, and Ancestors. He now works and lives in his beloved Sonoma County. Obi Kaufman is best known for his Field Atlas series of books that present the natural world from a unique multidisciplinary perspective. Um, we, in fact, the Alta, the the California Field Atlas was Alta's first ever Christmas gift. Um, in our first year of of making the magazine, we all got the Field Atlas as our gift from our publisher. Um, so it is very near and dear to our hearts. Um, in addition to the California Field Atlas, OB has the state of water, understanding California's most precious resource, the forests of California, the coasts of California. Um, and currently working on the deserts of California. Last up in this kind of book in the series will be the state of fire, understanding how, why, and where California burns. When he is not backpacking, you will find this painter poet at home in the East Bay tucked in the shadow of his beloved Mount Diablo. I am, there he is. I am so excited <laughs> to welcome both of these kind of brilliant thinkers today. But before we begin, a pitch. Alta Journal is an award-winning quarterly magazine and website focused on California and the West. We are now six and a half-ish years old. Um, if you're new to us, if you're unfamiliar, we host weekly events like this. Our quarterly, our big, beautiful quarterly journal is available for 50 bucks a year. Makes a great holiday gift. We've got a new bookstore guide to bookstores of California and the West. We host a monthly California book club. Um, Caribbean Fergosa is our guest next week. So if you like what we do here, if, if you want to support independent journalism, please do check out altaonline.com and consider joining us as a member. This interview will be recorded and posted to altaonline.com later today. There is a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen to ask questions for our guests. We will send you links to the Place and Purpose podcast where you can listen to it and watch it. I'm going to get to that. It's a video. It's a live video podcast intersection of media, um, as well as anything else that pops up today. So with that, Chairman Greg Saris, artist Obi Kaufman, welcome so much to Alta Live. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Beth. Good to be yeah, here. Yeah, thank you, Beth. Um, I wanted to start, I, my first two questions are very- Thank you, Alta. Yes, we love you. Um, our very kind of place and purposey. I see, I want to say hello. I, our audience is very welcome to check in where they're zooming in from. Hi to Phoenix, Arizona, Santa Rosa, South City, South San Francisco. I am in Nevada, California, Northern Marin. Um, let's just talk very literally about place. Greg, where are you today? I am sitting in Rohnert Park, uh, California, north of you. What is that, about 20 miles north of yeah. Nevada? Yeah. Yes. Um, and Obi, where are you today? Uh, I'm in my new studio right on the railroad tracks here at uh, West Berkeley. Uh, so if I if I go mute, it's because a train's rolling by. 
Um, can you tell me a little bit about so much of your work, both of your work, not just in the podcast, but just the the in terms of your published work, um, or in many cases, in Obi's case, artwork, um, is focused on kind of giving a sense of place to where we are right now. Um, and not just the history of it, but the the natural environment of it that we may not be as attuned to as you two are. Can you tell me a little bit about your connection um, to each of the places you are right now? Greg, I'll mm. start with you. All right, well, I'm, I'm sitting on the Aboriginal homeland of my ancestors. My great, great grandmother was born in the original vi village of Petaluma, which is just a little uh, south of where I'm sitting right now. So the, the place is incredibly important to me in terms of who I am as a person, my history, my ancestry, all those sorts of things. Um, and interestingly enough, I mean, the landscape is in where I'm sitting is incredibly transformed in multiple ways. But Roner Park, the area here, uh, before contact this time of year, the winter was underwater. So um, this whole area where we are is underwater, hence the very clay soil. Um, regardless, um, the stories and uh, from time immemorial creep up past the houses, past the shopping centers, um, and through the ancestors uh, for me to tell and understand who I am here in this place. Wow. Obi, mm -hmm. what about your connection to, to where you are in Berkeley? Well, all of my books really are grounded in the idea, the process, the journey, an internal journey, really, uh, that is based on the concept of how do I be more from this place? How do I stop settling this place? How do I stop colonial colonializing my own mind, if you will? And getting in tune with what that means today in the you know as we approach the middle of the 21st century is something much different than it meant a couple hundred years ago and it's something much different than it will mean a couple hundred years from now so it's very much about the right here right now which gets to exactly why greg and i started this podcast every month we meet uh underneath the ancient laurel trees on the top of sonoma mountain where the world revolves around us and we sit still and we acknowledge what's going on in the climate, in the landscape, and animal ethology, and also really what's going on in the evolution of the ancient stories and how they might be applied in some sort of modern context, seasonally, ecologically, uh, balancing always this idea of scientific innovation with traditional ecological knowledge on a local level. And what that means to me here as a resident of the Bay Area, a life, well, lifelong, not quite yet, uh, you know, there, there's so many ties that this bioregion has to one another. You know, uh, Greg mentioned his great, great, great grandmother from Petaluma, which he, he told a story about um, in his latest collection, Becoming Story. The, the, the story is called The Last Woman from Petaluma. And apparently uh, her name was Supul. Is that the right pronunciation there, Greg? Yes, yeah, it's, it's as good as any of us can guess. Yes, good. <laughs> T-S-U-P-U. -U. Uh, anyway, she, upon lamenting the last sighting of uh, the condors i guess it was a couple of decades before the gold rush even but the last sighting of the con california condor in the bay area said how will my people dance when we have no feathers referring to the uh the the regalia uh worn um through traditional ceremonies or whatever but now that we have condors returning especially to my native range here the diablo range the northernmost peak is mount diablo itself condors returning last month we're finding that our language is anemic we don't have a word for um a flock of california condors 
That word doesn't exist. We know of like a flam. You've heard of maybe a flamboyance of flamingos or a murder of crows or a parliament of owls. There's no word for a flock of California condors. And I recommend humbly that in honor of the last woman of Petaluma, Supu, we call we call a flock of condors a dance of California condors. Okay. Well, that's, that's a, what I'm putting forth, Beth. That's what I got. Okay, uh, let's run with it. I mean, that's incredible. Okay, okay well, we, we've gotten to place and Obi, you kind of moved into my next question, which is purpose. Both of you um, do such extraordinary work. Why start, and are, are incredibly busy, um, why start this podcast? What is the purpose of Place and Purpose and how did it come together? Well, it, it came together um, sort of, it was very interesting because Obi and I were at the Bay Area Book Festival and we ended up, as I recall, Obi, on the stage. Uh, I had a book out then and I think you had a book out then and we ended up on the stage together and the, inter you know, the interchange between us um, really just felt um, charged, just electric. It was wonderful. And um, the audience was engaged. And I think out of that, we just said, why don't we just keep talking? So, um, and being that we're so busy, you know, it's one of those things where, or at least from my point of view, Obi and Beth, I would have said, oh, well, let's keep talking. And of course, then you get so busy, you get lost. Yeah. But I think we decided to lock it down in a commitment called a podcast. Is that fair enough, Obi? <laughs> yeah, that, that that works. That works. I think I think we were brought together on stage there. Gosh, I can't believe that was almost two years ago uh, at Freight and Salvage uh, by our common publisher, Payday Books. Payday. Right? And, and and then, uh, yeah, um, Greg was kind enough to show me his mountain, the the subject of his book collection of stories called How a Mountain Was Made. Really season one or year one, remember we do this one time a month. So uh, we don't, we don't, you know, you kind of think of podcasts like in terms of seasons, but we think in terms of years, right? 12 months, a full calendar rotation uh, and for one year, 12 episodes. And, um, you know, it might be raining, it might be sunny, we might be in hats and scarves or we might be uh, in short sleeve shirts. Um, We'll take it all. But I really fell in love with that place. And through Greg's stories, these stories that he has stewarded from time immemorial and translated into uh, modern prose, you know, I mean, a lot of our discussions in year one, before we started having regular guests, a lot of our discussions in year one were really almost like uh, graduate literature seminars on on like Shakespearean analysis of Coyote and his nephew Chicken Hawk and uh, uh, you know his wife Frog Woman these characters that come up again and again and are laden with um, human psychologies or human like uh, foibles hubrises uh, I don't know if you can pluralize hubris like that but. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, all of these stories pointing back to the idea that Greg starts his books off where it's like, this: these are stories about sacred time, a time when animals were people, right? So this is, these from the get, these are stories about people, but they're, they, it, they take place in this sacred time, which is still right now, which I think is a very important point uh, in, in regards to some of the challenges potentially that we face as a uh, California society today. And this podcast, I want to make clear to our audience if they haven't had the chance to listen or watch, and we will send you links to how to do all of that, um, is live. It is recorded live and it is filmed live. Um, and I'm, I'm curious about the choice to do that, because as I mean, for those of us that just listen to podcasts, you know, on repeat, they're very edited. They're um, your and I hesitate to use the word organic just because it is so obviously organic. But mm -hmm. your your sessions, your episodes are very organic, conversational experiences that for the most part, the most recent episode was indoors due to inclement weather. But um, <clears throat> you are literally in the seasons. You are in nature. Can you tell me about that, how that came to be, that decision? Um, I, I 
Obi, take a shot at that. I, I, we, we all, I think we liked we the whole idea of place. We wanted to kind of settle down in one place, as Obi said earlier, um, and watch the world change and evolve through the seasons around us. And I mean, we we did consider going to different locations, but then the viewers who at least were continuing with us wouldn't have that sense of that one place changing through the seasons as we're sitting still talking. Is that, again, I think that's one of the ways we came to think about it being in one place. We also, as Obi alluded to, um, the mountain, Sonoma Mountain, where we where we where this filming takes place, is the sacred place for us where Coyote created people and the world as we know it, as the stories go. So, and then we were, were planted in a grove of ancient, ancient bay trees where my aunt, all females, by the way, that give the pepper nuts, um, where my ancestors years ago had collected the, uh, you know, pepper nuts. And, and so I think that a, a lot of it had to do with sitting in that one place, you get that trajectory of time. And time, not just linear, linear, linear time as in history, but seasons. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I, I, just to, just to um, keep going with those thoughts there, you know, I, I, I am so grateful to the uh, Federated Indians of the Great Rancheria to have such faith in me and, and, and welcome me into this nervous narrative space to, to listen to these stories, react to these stories and, you know, put forth my own my own um, research, as it were, towards uh, their enrichment and diffusion of, across, you know, California media and the internet media. I think that, that that we need to talk about long form conversations in general. I think that we are we are often told that uh, um, our attention spans are becoming like that of goldfish, uh, and we don't have time for this or that. But inside this sacred space, under these ancient trees, inside the sacred now too, Greg and I have this. Uh, um, energy uh, that will not be improved by some sort of uh, editing process in the future. It won't be improved. You know, we're not, we're sort of, we're sort of not here for entertainment to make a reality show. We're here for the conversation, for the, for the friendship, for the warmth, the truthfulness, the honesty, and the energy that is captured by our lack of any sort of editing software in, in its in its presentation. What do you what is the audience meant to experience in that kind of conversation? Well, this kind of this is something I, I think I'm going to perhaps indirectly answer your question, Beth. And th that's a very good question. But one of the things that I as an individual and for for the indigenous people here, the landscape and features of the landscape have always been a sacred text, a Bible, whether it's an outcropping of rocks or a creek or a spring somewhere, there's stories associated with it that are old and ancient. And that's how we knew and remembered what was important um, for survival, for, for sustainability. It, they, the stories reminded us. And as we got disconnected from place, we get disconnected from so, those lessons and those important stories. And so one of the missions that in my own writing uh, and what Obi is doing is again, I think, and this is where our commonality here is once again, reassociating ourselves with place so that we can be responsible for it once again and know who we are in it once again, which is what we had done since time immemorial here. And I hope that our audience can experience some of that with us. And the ways in which we talk and sit in one place, I hope that that would, my hope anyway, is that people listening and watching will walk outdoors and just sit down wherever they are and look around. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> good. And, you know, I'm like, uh, I see, I see a pretty aspirational thing going on here with, with, with Greg, at least inside of my own heart, this, this, this consilience between uh, the very, very new story that is emerging about 
what what uh, the you know the planetary biospheric processes are our relationship to them and the very very old story that reveals california to be a place that has been stewarded for tens of thousands of years every single living acre of the place has been has been um uh, you know, actively manipulated by by the, the anthropogenic forces, if you will, and so and so that sort of uh, that vocational interest in my own work, as far as being an artist is concerned, right? I need to I need to remain an artist and not necessarily something like a scientist. I'm not a field scientist, but I do need I do need to. Uh, interact with this narrative space where I am often a policy communicator or a um, science communicator, a cultural communicator, though, is kind of where I, I, I feel like there's, there's a big sort of uh, narrative hole in my understanding of California that Greg has really opened me up to through the analysis of these stories and this, and these, and, uh, you know this 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 old way of thinking, which in fact is cutting edge in the sense that it is these older wisdom traditions of uh, uh, local uh, bioregional technologies, very sophisticated in their in their ancient communal qualities, are perhaps exactly the the antidote or the salve that we are looking for as modern Californians towards successfully navigating these these extremely treacherous bottlenecks ecologically, sociologically, whatever, as the, as they're sort of uh, threatening us existentially at every turn, right? And and turning to uh, how how local peoples, indigenous peoples, have dealt with say the end of the world before might help us deal with it again now that it seems like we're coming around again to this idea of the end of things which is of course always just the beginning of things that you you kind of touched upon obi what greg um brings to this to place and purpose to kind of his sense of history uh, um and and the stories of the land. Greg, what does Obi bring to your conversations? How does this pairing work for, for both of you? Because it is a bit, you mentioned early on that this there was this chemistry, this is a spark between the two of you. Um, so what do you feel like Obi brings to the table? Well, you know, I, I was just, it's funny. I was just experiencing it as Obi was talking. And um, it's uh, where, where so much of the science and other things that Obi, I mean, we're both we're both talking about what Gregory Bateson uh, coined over fifty years ago, e ecology of mind, mm -hmm. and um, the the scientists science is coming towards understanding an ecology of place and all all these sorts of other things, and there's a coming together of as Obi was saying the ancient and the scientific, or or even if we just say someone who, the the indigenous people come from the land, others, the colonizers and others come to the land. Mm. And there's a difference. So how do we all come together and be from the land once again? And mm. so I think, I think and we're all in this together. So I think just our our dialogue is an example of a coming together to create a common consensus of well-being does that i think that's yes yes and it very much comes through um especially i mean it's interesting so season one i want to i want to kind of compare season one to season two because we are in the middle midst of season two now um season two brings in guests and you've had <clears throat> everyone from heyday publisher steve wasserman Rebecca Solnit, um, Wade Crowfoot. Uh, you recently had a naturalist on. This was the most recent. I'm so sorry, I forget her name. How do you, what what inspired you to bring in, say, okay, let's let's do guests this season. And how do you pick them? Yeah, oh, that's right. So yeah, you go. 
No, you go, Obi. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so our last guest was named uh, Adina Marinlander, Dr. Thank Adina you. Marinlander, who is uh, an author, and she's also the the um, she was also the founder of the California Naturalist Program. She's she's the she's the genius behind that certification program through the UC Extension, which now has local chapters all across the state. So uh, she wrote the California Naturalist Handbook. She also wrote this book called Climate Stewardship, which uh, is the handbook for a new certification program to UC Extension, where you can actually become now a California climate steward and all of that entails. And I did the illustrations for that book and Greg wrote the forward to that book, but this was years before, well, about a year before he and I kicked off the place and purpose uh, uh project and we didn't even we didn't even know that like it was this great like sort of serendipitous thing when we finally realized that oh hey both of our names are on the cover there look at that so uh, <laughs> well yeah you that was, suggested that was or you suggested the name and i said oh i think i wrote a introduction to one of her books and then you said oh yeah and i did the the cover i said oh well so <laughs> That was that was a really wonderful episode. We just recorded that episode last week. You can watch it now. You can watch all of our episodes at placeandpurpose.live or you can watch you can watch them on YouTube also. They're they're Or you can listen to them. Fun. I mean, you can also or you can listen to they're them. All That's right. Here. That's right. We have we have an amazing production team and they uh they really do a great job with the video. So, if you want to and that's important to the telling of the story too. The color of the leaves, the the quality of green in the grass, the wildflowers, uh, the deer that occasionally visit us, the 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 different birds of prey and songbirds that come through, uh, the the uh, the um, the little meadow where we sit, and uh, so so that visual component is very important to us also so so then adding a third voice to this it's it's nice you know a, a, a tripod a tripod is a, is a is a stable structure and it turns out it's that it it, it, uh, it works that way in a conversation as well bringing some new energy into some of these um these big topics, these timely, these timely themes that Greg and I keep going back to again and again. Uh, we've our next guest, our next episode, January eleventh, uh, will be with uh, Pandora Thomas, who is a local agriculturalist with a, a farm called Earthseed. Uh, there too in Sonoma County, and uh, that is going to be a wonderful conversation as we as we delve into issues of uh, food sovereignty and uh, uh, what thinking locally might be might uh, might be now in terms of. Uh, uh, climate breakdown by way of anthropogenic global warming now that top 28 has really sort of fizzled out. Um, and yet uh, really shined a light on how important agriculture is to not only uh, remediate the ongoing carbon uh, climate crisis, but but adapt to it, right? So, um, and so Pandora Thomas will be joining us for our next episode on January 11th. Do you have a, do you have a dream list? Who's on your bucket list of guests, if you could pluck anyone uh, to the mountain. I, I, i'm working on it i'm working on it beth I'm, I'm distilling it from a dream to a vision so i don't want to i don't want to reveal too you much want to right manifest there. it here right, right. <laughs> i don't want to call anybody out they're all they're okay. all local and they're all cool and i and i can get them all it's just going to take me a second you know so so yeah greg and i have have a long list from from international celebrities to to uh you know, local local types who have never done this kind of thing before. So we're we're all over the board in that regard because because there is there is uh, there's value there everywhere. How do you? I'm just curious about the logistics. I mean, I you know I we do Alta Live. We've done this three years from this very laptop in my house. Um, I and I'm that alone is you know it's technologically 
technologically challenging as he, as you've experienced earlier today. Um, how on earth do you make this happen? I mean, just uh, <laughs> the sound alone, I would be like, oh, the wind's going to screw it up. The leaves are going to, um, and, and then the rain that happened in the, the most recent episode, you know, how do you navigate nature is always going to win in terms of, you know, adhering to the complexities of recording video and sound um, and making everything go smoothly. You know, it's impossible. How do you do it? Well, first of all, of course, as Obi mentioned, we have an incredible production team with Jared and the folks. But um, the other thing is what you just said, Beth, um, we are an example of a, in one place of adjusting to nature, of having to make adjustments as you live in one place. And so there's times, there's times when we have to go inside. There's times when we have to move over this way a little more. Um, there, uh, there's times you have to watch out for the lizards or the snakes. So we're, we, in one place, we're constantly adjusting. Um, but what I watch, and I, and as they set up, I, I watch from my home because I look down. All I know is that about eight o'clock in the morning, um, a whole group of folks come in with cameras and zooms and everything else, and they're just going down through the trees into the yard and. Uh, somehow magic happens. It's all set up. It's a set, if you will, in nature. And Obi and I go onto the set, <laughs> and oh. they've created the set. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very good. Yeah. That's that's Wildbound PR yeah. is the name of the production company, and they 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 are a, a you know full service company that specializes in like this our kind of literature, and and they've been doing a tremendous job and. And so we've got, there's actually four characters in our in our communal narrative here. It's like Greg and I sit there and talk, but then we have this more than human space around us that is, is very much conversant with us on a regular basis. And then the fourth character would be the production team that you don't see at all, except they seem to be making all of the magic truly happen. It yeah, they're walking right. all around us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do encourage our audience, um, if you can, to to check out the video of this. I mean, podcast is, you know, it's it's a video experience um, because it's it's like watching a really beautiful kind of intellectual talk show um, underneath some gorgeous trees on a hilltop in Sonoma. It's just it's a unique experience. There is I have not seen anything else like it. Um in the hey, milieu. Yeah, I'll pass yeah. your good words onto the trees. Please. How much you like. <laughs> and the lizards, and there's I think there was some mention of a bobcat recently. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean it's it's literally wild up there, but it's so interesting. Do you you is are you committed to a season three? And if so, will it be a, a, the same format? Well, we no. haven't we haven't talked about that yet, Greg. No. You know, we've got Greg and I, I both have that. books coming out this year. For, and this is, this is Heyday's 50th anniversary uh, from when Malcolm Margolin started it in uh, 1974. So so here we are now. Uh, Greg's book is sort of leading the parade of new titles by Heyday in the spring with his book called The Forgetters Tales, or just The Forgetters, I guess, is the final yeah, yeah, the forgetters, right? And this is this is sort of a sequel to um, how a mountain was made, right, Greg? Yeah, and it it addresses the very things that we're talking about. It has the Crow Sisters telling stories again, but they're telling stories about the people who've left the mountain, um, all of all of civilization, basically, but all stories around uh, Marin and Sonoma County about people, Indians and non-Indians, who their behaviors or things they've done. Um, indicate the ways in which they've forgotten some of these eternal verities that keep us alive and going. And so the Crow sisters tell these parables, if you will. So there's parables about, you know, a group of people living here who were mean to a certain individual that had a lot to do with flowers and taking care of pollinating and what happens when they didn't like something about him and he got ousted from the community and then what's left to pollinate the flowers. Of course, they called him hummingbird. But um, so, uh, you know, there's parables like that. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And by the way, Wildbound is um, doing an the animated uh, for when the book comes out, they're doing an animated series of the Crow Sisters uh, cartoons talking back and forth. 
So mm. yeah, to go with the book. So uh, you'll have their dialogue. So I'm I'm really uh, looking forward to that. Uh, to continue okay. to continue the analysis, you know, he, he, the Crow Sisters are are also called Answer Woman and Question Woman, and uh, Question Woman can't do anything really but ask questions, and but. <sighs> her mechanism in the relationship is that answer woman the other crow they're just two crows sitting on a fence the other the other the other woman uh answer woman can't remember anything unless question woman gives her the and question to spark the narrative stories. yeah yeah they need each other it's essential and again that's paradigmatic if you will of of our relationship sometimes i think obi and i are question woman and answer woman but we flip roles all the time <laughs> That's right, brother. We certainly are. We certainly are. Yeah. And so I so I've got my book coming out in the fall, which will be the sixth California Field Atlas. And that's going to be called The State of Fire, bookending my previous work, The State of Water. The subtitle of that book will be Understanding Where, How, and Why California Burns. So I'm going to continue my ecological assessment and uh, across this poetic landscape of my own soul and my own vocation towards some uh some estimation uh of of what it means to know the character of california fire as it is so inextricably linked to california's the the the, the character of california's natural world at all so uh Understanding that getting right with fire, I think, is the greatest and perhaps the most important and daunting challenge of California society in and across the next few decades, at least. Well, I am excited um, to read both of those and hopefully to have you each back on Alta Live or in Alta in some capacity to talk about them. Um, we are, you guys are off running, writing more books and doing I mean, a million things. So I will let you go. But before I do, I would like to invite everyone to our last Alta Live of the year next Wednesday. We are excited to welcome the LA Philharmonic, LA Phil, to talk about the music of John Williams, great oh. movie composer, John Williams, and how oh. both LA Phil and San Francisco Symphony are doing screenings of Home Alone a film near and dear to my heart. This holiday season performed live. Each symphony um, or orchestra will be performing the music of John Williams live to screenings of Home Alone this holiday season. So we're going to talk about kind of his incredible music and why it's so popular um, for symphonies and orchestras to do. Join us for that Wednesday, December 20th. Again, Chairman Greg Saris, artist and naturalist Obi Kaufman. Place and Purpose is their podcast. I hope everyone checks it out. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you, Thank Beth, you Beth. everybody. Thank you, Obi. Thank Good you, Alton. Good to see you, buddy. See you in a little bit.